So at first, uh, we want to make sure that we pay respect to the Algonquin people, who are the traditional guardians of this land. We acknowledge their long-standing relationship with this territory, which remains unceded. We pay respect to all Indigenous people in this region, from all nations across Canada, who call Ottawa home. We acknowledge the traditional knowledge keepers, both young and old, and we honour their courageous leaders, past, present, and future. And if you'll join me in prayer, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. I have the Calm app, and uh, this came up today, and it just, it very much spoke to me. So I thought that I would put it into the slide deck for this evening. Sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest we take between two deep breaths. So what I want you to do now, I invite you to take two deep breaths. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. All right, welcome to the session this evening, all about Pear Deck. Um, if you'd like the slide deck this evening, you just need to type in where it says short URL dot at slash C-U-K-X-6, um, and you can have the slide deck. Uh, I'm going to be flipping in between the slide deck, in between a Pear Deck that I'm going to show you, so what I'm really going to do this evening is you're going to have to listen to uh, me talk. Unfortunately, I'm sure you're very sick of my voice because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be directing you as to what tab I want you to be looking at. So if I tell you that I'm going to need you to have your eyeballs back on the Google Meet tab, you're going to look for that red circle. Um, that could mean that's probably where the Google Meet is. And then as well, we're gonna be working with a Pear Deck. You're sort of gonna be the participants or the students in this scenario, and you're going to be toggling or switching between those two tabs. But I'm gonna try and keep you uh, posted as to where I need you to be, um, just because uh, it can get a bit confusing. So um, just keep that in mind. So the team, so my name is Catherine Wake. I'm one of the LT consultants. Um, Normally we have other people here so that they can monitor the chat and whatnot, but I'm going to be completely honest, uh, we're, uh, we're burnt out. So uh, they're taking the evening to rest and be well, which is very important. So I'm kind of running solo here, so I won't be able to see anything that's happening in the chat box. Uh, I, am, I might call out a friend like Ian or Kathy. Um, if my screen is not properly presented, just hop on the microphone and let me know because uh, I won't be able to see um, or see the chat box. So if I'm not presenting what I'm supposed to be presenting, Ian or Kathy, feel free to turn on mic and just keep me in check. Uh, I would appreciate that. But of Done. course, I got it. Okay. Of I course, I to let you know you're good. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, obviously, I come part of a great team: Tara Potter, Bill Corcoran, and Steph Pearson. Um, those are the people that you can reach out to at the board. All right, what is the plan for this evening? So I'd like to just go over the why do we have this tool and what is it? Then what I'm gonna do is show you how to get started. Then I'm gonna walk you through uh, how do I share uh, a Pear Deck with my students while I'm in a Google Meet. So if you did watch my webinar from the spring, what I'd like to focus a lot of time on now is how you're gonna present it in a remote and virtual environment, because um, that's kind of this added layer um, that I think we need to spend a little bit more time on. And then we're actually going to try it out. So I want to make sure that um, when we talk about Pear Deck, if you are right now experiencing, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of technology that's coming down the pipeline. I'm really just getting comfortable with Google Meet. Pear Deck, um, it's an intuitive tool, but there's a lot of layers and there's a lot of clicks. I'm going to be completely honest and uh, open with all of you. So. If you're not ready to take on a tool that is a little bit more complicated, there are tools that are a little bit more basic that you might wanna start with before coming to Pear Deck. Cause I would say it's a beast. Um, it is my favorite tool. And I think it's incredibly rewarding for all age groups, K to 12. Um, we also see a lot of um, principals using it with staff. Um, as well as anyone at the board office uh, who can use it with other adult colleagues. It doesn't have to be with students. So I'm gonna give you an out. If you're like, Catherine, this is not for me. You can leave the meet, go for it. Um, your wellness is more important. So just that little caveat is that Pear Deck is not uh, the simplest of tools. 
Um, it's going to take the full hour this evening to kind of get through all the amazing things that's there. But if you're looking for a tool uh, to engage your students, this is definitely the one, but I'm a little biased. All right, so this evening, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be switching between my screens. Uh, and I know that there's a little bit of a glitch with Google Meet where it's difficult to share or switch tabs. So bear with me if my screen is not showing exactly what we need to do. But what we're gonna do is I'm going to stop presenting this tab. I'm gonna go back to my Meet. 38 people, doesn't make me nervous at all. My stomach is not a bunch of knots. We're totally cool. Ian and Kathy, can you see the staff portal? Yes, we can. Thank you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the staff portal. So Pear Deck is a tool that syncs with Google Slides. So you have to know how to use Google Slides. And what Pear Deck does is that it sort of sits on top of slides and makes them interactive for students. So we're gonna get into that part and how to create the actual Pear Decks, but I wanna bring your attention to Pear Deck on the staff portal. So this um, on the portal actually takes you to um, the teacher uh, sort of settings page. So once you get here, you go up to the top right hand corner and you hit teacher login. And if you're properly logged into your OCSB account, you should see at the top right hand corner your account. We have premium because this is a paid tool for OCSB. And then I'm actually going to go into my account. It's going to take you to this screen. And this is where you'll be able to see all of the sessions that you run get saved. And it gets saved under sessions. You can also play around with your settings. So I'm gonna start by going through the settings that you can use in Pear Deck. So if you change them here, it's going to apply to all of the Pear Decks that you create. So these are your settings that would apply to everything that you do. So at the very beginning, if you've never experienced Pear Deck before, at the very beginning, you can ask a quick classroom climate survey where basically it just, you'll see it tonight, um, it asks students how they're feeling with smiley faces. If you don't want that to appear at the beginning, you can turn it off. I would suggest always having Immersive Reader on. It still says that it's in the testing version, but it's actually pretty good. Um, it's it's a, the equivalent of read and write. So it really provides that accessibility for our students um, with learning disabilities, students whose first language is not English. Um, it has over 80 languages um, that can support our ESL population and our students with special needs. So definitely turn it on. The students don't have to use it, but it sits right within Pear Deck and the students can use it to engage with the text on the slide. We don't have Google Classroom. Takeaways, I'm gonna explain this a little bit later, but you're going to want to turn it on. Again, it will give you the option every time if you want to use the takeaways. I'll explain what it is when we get into it. And in your settings, you always wanna turn on Google logins. Um, because of that accountability piece, not, uh, like Jamboard, you don't really know who does what. In uh, Pear Deck, you are able to know who does what. So definitely turn on uh, logins, takeaways, immersive reader, and you can choose about classroom climate. So now that those settings are in place, I want to now go and actually create my Pear Deck. So I am going to now go into a slide deck that I have ready for this evening. You might not have a slide deck that's ready and that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to create something from nothing or you can use a slide deck that already exists and just bump it up to that awesome engaging level. So if you don't have the cute little pair in your Google slide deck, all you have to do is go to add-ons and get add-ons or you might already see Pear Deck here. So again, I'm in Google Slides right now. If I don't see the pair, I go to add-ons, Pear Deck, and open Pear Deck. Once I click open Pear Deck, what it's going to do is it's going to populate this bar on the right-hand side of my screen. So as you can see, I have my Google Slide Deck and I have my Pear Deck toolbar side by side. 
So I can create on my Google slide and then I can layer on top of that some interactivity. Keeping in mind, I'm in teacher mode right now. So nothing's going to be interactive here. It only becomes interactive once I start my lesson. And tonight I already told you, you are going to experience this as a student. So you're gonna be able to see um, how it feels to receive these types of questions. So on the right hand side, like I said, is the toolbar. So I'm at the top, this is where we're gonna start the lesson when we're ready. We're not ready yet. Then there's the three lines. So the three lines is where you can toggle on require student logins. Always have this on because of course we want the students to log in so we know who is answering what question. Then as you go down the toolbar, it's going to give you some options of what you can put onto the slide to make it interactive. What's really great is that if you are a first timer using Pear Deck, Pear Deck comes with a really wonderful template library. So if I click that template library, I have lessons uh, or slides rather that I can actually click and move into my slide deck. So if you look, it really is assessment as for and of. So you can actually pick slides. So if I need a slide for during a lesson, Here's an example of a true and false or drag your dot to tell me how you're feeling. There's lots of slides that are already pre-populated that you can use and drag into your slide deck. Down below, you have some great um, six C's, so critical thinking, some social emotional learning slides. You can go on and on. If you are a primary teacher, there are slides designed specifically for littles and truly um, as you know, being very close to the virtual elementary program, and I'm sure there's some on here this evening, the kindergartens are using Pear Deck very frequently. And it's amazing to see, because I'm gonna show you the levels that you can use, because it really is, and I know this buzzword goes around, but low floor, high ceiling, meaning that there's an entry point for all students and all abilities, um, but then there's also ways that you can scaffold it up for those who need that um, extra challenge. So it does have some slides uh, down here based off of subject area. So template library, first thing, great to play with. There's also tons of resources on the Pear Deck website of slide decks that are already created. So right now we're in a zone where it's taking a lot of our personal time to create these digital activities that work in our remote environment. Go visit the Pear Deck website and save yourself some time and find some really, really rich um, resources that you can pull in. But no matter what, even if you do pull in a template, there are only six different ways that a student can engage with the slide. So they can engage with the slide, meaning that they can provide a text answer. You can do multiple choice questions. You can do a question that results in a number answer. There is a website. It's a little complicated. I don't think it's as intuitive as it could be right now, but it would send students to a website. The big one, big one, big one is that you can make it a drawing slide so the students would be able to draw their responses or a draggable slide. Down below, this is when you can add audio to a slide. So right within Pear Deck, if you have a student who's having trouble decoding the words on the page, maybe you wanna be able to give a prompt, you can actually add audio into the slide so that when you present it, the students can actually press play and they can hear your voice, either read the question aloud or um, you can get creative. Maybe it's just some encouragement, some like woot woots, you know, whatever you wanna do to like build that engagement with your students in that remote environment. Then it has some resources down below, but you're gonna be spending the bulk of your time moving this level of interactivity onto a slide. So without further ado, here's a slide. It was blank. I simply typed in this question onto my slide, draw what helps you get through the day. I now need to make it a drawing slide. What do I do? I click the word draw. It's now going to add the layer on top of my slide. I know that it worked because I have this gray bar on the bottom that says students draw anywhere on the slide. I'm in teacher mode, so I can't draw. I don't have the tools yet. I only get those once I start the lesson or when my students receive the lesson. If I made a mistake, and actually I want it to be a text slide, I can just click text and it's gonna change the overlay on the slide. 
Again, it tells me down below how my students are going to interact with the slide. If you don't want anything and you made a mistake, you can just delete the gray bar and it's gonna delete that interactivity when you go to start the lesson. The second slide, this is one that I already pulled in from Pear Deck. I just copy and pasted the slide. This is an activity that the students would have to drag the car through the maze. It's a draggable slide. So what that means is I can choose how I want my students to drag the icon around the page. So right now I chose a race car um, to go around. But again, you can choose numbers, symbols, different types of um, labels, whatnot, different shapes, and you can change the color. You can also add multiple draggable items, um, meaning that maybe you have a map and you want students to be able to label and identify um, different places. You can add multiple, I think you can only add up to five or six, um, but you can change the colors, you can change the side. If you think about the accessibility, and maybe those fine motor skills um, need some support, this is where you would increase um, the size of the item. So this would be the draggable slide. Once I'm ready, I hit update slide. And now I know it says students drag the icon. So I've done it right. Here's another slide um, taken right from Pear Deck. Hi parents, what questions do you have for me? What should I know this week? Maybe you have parents who are involved. Maybe you're not doing this Pear Deck live with your students, and I'm gonna explain the difference. Maybe you're just sending this home as some supplementary work to do during asynchronous time, um, and maybe you want your parents to get engaged. So you can leave this open as a text slide to receive some feedback from your parent community. Um, I had a math question in my slide deck, and I took a picture and sent it to Mary Lou Deal, the math consultant, and she said, Catherine, that makes no sense. And I said, that's probably right. Uh, so she sent me this uh, awesome slide. So big shout out to Mary Lou for helping me today. This is a drawing slide. So again, she created um, a really awesome math prompt over here. She put the picture into the slide and then the students are gonna be able to draw on top of it. So if you think about what you can put as an educator or if you can put as a presenter or principal on the background and have people interact with it, um, the options are endless. This question down below, what is Catherine's favorite American city? So take a look at the skyline. Uh, maybe I want it to be a text or maybe I want it to be a multiple choice question. So I am going to overlay multiple choice and I'm gonna write in some cities. I'm gonna write in my choices for the multiple choice. And then I can add another. I think it also goes up to only five or six. And then I'm gonna update the slide. Again, it's not gonna look how it looks to students, but I know that it's a multiple choice question because of the bar that was put at the bottom. So I feel like I've kind of gone over um, a little bit of the slides. So keep in mind, you can keep your slides very basic. All of the fun comes from how the students are gonna interact with what's on the page. When we go to present, they can't move anything on your page, which is great, unless it's a draggable slide, but then they're dragging the icon. But this essentially becomes a locked background and the students will engage on top of it. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of all I want to go through in terms of that. But again, the template library, if you like something, if I go to the K to two littles, um, oh yeah, here's a point. I am going to, use this slide and I'm going to bring it into my slide deck. Any slide that you bring in that's part of a Pear Deck template, you can edit the items on the page if you don't like everything that's on there. So you can change the text, you can change the pictures, you can delete, you can remove, you have that flexibility. But for something like this, circle the items that start with B if you wanted to do a different letter, they don't have the full alphabet as part of the template gallery. So you would have to create your own. This kind of gives it just like just a template, but they don't have one for every letter of the alphabet. You would have to put in your own if you wanted anything else on top of that. So again, you do have that flexibility to edit any of the templates that you end up bringing into your page. So now I have my slide deck. Um, keep in mind, I think I already mentioned this, but if I didn't, I'm just gonna say it again. 
if you have a slide deck that you already have in your Google Drive, you can use it again, or you can use it and put the Pear Deck stuff on top of it. So that's really important, right? So don't reinvent the wheel. If you have a slide deck that's engaging and responsive to the students that are sitting in front of you that year, by all means, uh, just use the Pear Deck to make it interactive, which is awesome. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's lots that's already made out there. You have lots that's made. And again, keep your slide deck simple. Don't worry about making it look super fancy. So now I have my slide deck. I'm ready to sort of start my lesson. So I want to give it to my students. So I'm ready to share it. A couple of things that you should be thinking about before you share your Pear Deck. Number one, do you want students to be working on it live with you? Or do you want your students self-paced mode where they can work through the slide deck at their own pace? The other question you wanna ask, uh, do you want your students to get a copy of the slide deck and all of their answers in a Google Doc at the end? Yes or no? And the last question, have you made your slides accessible and responsive to the students that are sitting in front of you? So you may have a slide deck from five years ago, but is that actually meeting the students that you have sitting in front of you this year? So ask yourself those questions before you do all this work and put all the effort in. And then when you think you are, are ready and you have those answers to those questions, we're gonna go ahead and start the lesson. When you look in the top, and I'll go quickly back to my pair deck or my slide deck, sorry. All right, so your synchronous versus asynchronous. So you have two options with Pear Deck, which is fantastic. You have the ability to do a student paced activity, meaning that it's gonna give you a link. You can post the link into a Happer card. The students can click on it at any time and get into your slide deck and start answering the questions using that interactivity and move forward at their own pace. Or you can do the instructor paced activity, which is what we're gonna do this evening. And it means that I'm the instructor. When I go to present, I'm in control of who sees what and when. I can move the slides forward um, at my own pace and the students only see what I want them to see. So you have both. So it's really great for flexibility and I'm gonna show you an instructor pace. If you don't finish the activity in time or you have a student who is absent, you can switch it over in the middle of it to student paced. If the bell rings and you, know, you wanna continue it on their own. So you have some flexibility there. When you go to share, this is where the language is really important and I know that it's very confusing. You don't want to share the Google slide deck. You need to share the Pear Deck. So yes, confusing, I understand. So again, if you want them to interact with the questions the way that you set it up, you're gonna have to hit the green start lesson button, not the yellow share button. So I'm back in my slide deck, I'm ready to go, and I'm going to hit the green start lesson. I'm not going to hit share. Then this screen is going to pop up. It's going to give me those two options. So what I'm gonna do this evening, and it always makes me so nervous to go live with, with colleagues. Um, I'm gonna do instructor paced activity. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up a window. So what I'm gonna ask all of you to do this evening is I'm gonna ask you to open up another tab. And, oh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to paste the link into the chat box in our Meet. So I'm gonna choose Instructor Paste Activity. I'm going to start a new session. This screen pops up. Uh, and I'm gonna close the join code. This is really important to keep because this is your teacher dashboard. I'm going to minimize it for now. I am going to open up the code on the top right hand side and this is going to get me a link. Now I understand that this feels like a lot of steps to get started and it is, but just know that you can do this ahead of time. You don't have to do it live with your students. You just need this link. So now my link has been copied to the clipboard. I'm going to go back to our Google Meet and I'm going to put the link and I'm going to paste it into the chat. 
So all of you should now see in the Google Meet on the right hand side, the blue link. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to click on it and join me on this wonderful adventure. So once you click that link, and it, once it says waiting to join, come back to the Google Meet, and I want you to see what I'm seeing right now. So this is showing me that I have 27 students. Oh my, okay, the numbers keep going up. Butterflies keep going up, the more numbers that are there. So it's telling me that my students are ready to go. So that's really nice. You can see it in real time, how many students are with you. That's fantastic, that's awesome. So when I'm ready, I'm gonna hit start class. So this is the point where you as the teacher don't have to share anything. You don't have to present any tab in your Google Meet. The only reason I'm presenting right now is because I have to show you what my screen is. But when you're with your students on the Google Meet, the students are going to be in the Pear Deck tab so where you see the pair sorry I should just show you my screen instead of hands um, they're going to be in this tab they don't need to be in the meet while they're engaging with the pair deck unless you wanted to show them something which I'll explain so this is the point this is the only um, issue I would say that needs some scaffolding with your students so you're gonna be able to hear my voice, whether you like it or not, you're gonna be able to hear my voice and I'm gonna tell you, hey everybody, I need you back in the meet because I wanna show you something. But when you're talking about kindergarten to grade two, a lot of the teachers, um, they don't get me wrong, they are trying this live with their students, but a lot of them are also just putting the link in the Pear Deck for the, or in a half card for the students to do at their own time to avoid this, so you can choose. All the students have to have open is their Meet tab and their Pear Deck tab. You as the teacher don't need to be presenting anything because the students are going to be looking at the Pear Deck tab. They're not going to be looking at the Meet. So now that I have wonderful 35 glorious students, I'm going to now start my class. So what I want you to do now just listen to my voice, my soothing, soothing voice like nails on a chalkboard. You should all be in your Pear Deck tab and I want you to be drawing. You don't need to be in the Google Meet right now. So I want everybody drawing what helps you get through the day. So you can see uh, on the slide that you have some drawing colors. Play with the settings on the left-hand side. You can also change the thickness of your stylus. You can also put text on a slide. So again, kind of more bang for your buck. You get text as well as drawing. So very handy. Gonna give you a bit more time. So as you can see on your screen, you now have a countdown. All of you are being very appropriate. I can see your answers in real time. Now you yes. should be able to see. Yes? I was just wondering, can we see each other's answers or is it just private to you? I will explain that in one second. All right, so now that you can, uh, you're done, your screens have been locked. I am now going to ask you to come back to the Google Meet tab. Keep Pear Deck open. 
come back to the Google Meet so you can see me. And I just want to show you one thing before we move to the next slide is I've now opened it on my phone. So if you have a phone and you're comfortable signing into Pear Deck on your phone, I can now advance the slide using my mobile device. I can also see the responses, but I'm gonna go into all of that um, when we finish these slides. I'm gonna show you all of those types of things. So now I'm gonna ask you to go back to the Pear Deck and I'm going to advance you to the next slide. And I did that using my phone. I advanced you to the next slide. So now you are in a maze. You're having fun, you're driving around. Everybody's got the energy to do a maze. For sure, for sure. In the essence of time, I'm gonna move us forward. Again, you'll probably always want to be able to do a timer just because it's that extra prompt for those students who need that support for their transitions. Nora, I'm gonna go over all those questions. We're just gonna finish the slides and then I'll go over how I'm doing all the magic that I'm doing. We got some great questions coming in. Again, I can see who has responded. I can see what they're responding and I'll show you all of that. So again, in real time, in a Google Meet, I can see the students who are engaged. Keep in mind, all of your cameras are off but I can still see that Noelle and Kathy and Jennifer and Aaron and Bonnie are engaged in my lesson and I didn't need to force them to have their camera on, right? So again, a really nice option. All right, I'm gonna move you to the next slide. It's a drawing slide. So again, think about the math possibilities, the science applications, the art applications. Again, um, you can use the immersive reader, practice using that on a slide with heavier text. If I, had, if I added audio, you would be able to play it and hear my voice. Looks like everyone is kind of going on, perfect. Oh, hi, Kim. Kim, you're probably definitely sick of me at this point. All right, I'm gonna move in the essence of time. We're gonna move to a multiple choice. Very important question, what is Catherine's favorite American city? Everyone can uh, do their multiple choice. That's what a multiple choice question looks like. And we'll quickly move into the last one. Not that it matters, you've already experienced a drawing slide, but this would be a kindergarten level activity, perhaps. So I locked everybody's screens without a countdown, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So now that everybody ha has a locked screen, I'm going to invite you back into the Google Meet and I'm going to walk you through the ever amazing teacher dashboard. All right, I'll give you 10 more seconds. Everybody should keep your Pear Deck open but I'm gonna invite everybody to come back to uh, the Google Meet. So when you start a Pear Deck presentation, a dashboard opens up. So it's a little bit tricky in Google Meet because as you can see, I'm presenting my whole screen. So with your students, you wouldn't present 
this dashboard. Unless, well, you can, but again, obviously you can build the trust because I'm going to show you what I mean. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to work the left-hand side, then I'm going to go down and I'm going to show you all the options on the bottom of what you can do. So I'm really going to work from left to right on the teacher dashboard. If I want to see student responses to slide one, all I need to do is click it. So for me, I can see the student name under here. <laughs> These just get so funny. Um, this is a list layout. I want to see a little bit more. I don't have all the time in the world. I now can see, oh, all the responses. And if you're missing that student connection, I'm telling you a Pear Deck drawing slide will always make you smile. So again, if you're not presenting this to your students, they, were, they won't see this, right? So what happens if Kim Hutchinson, principal extraordinaire, draws something inappropriate? Kim would never do such a thing, but what if she did? I'm gonna find her answer. Hopefully, maybe. Okay, I can't find her answer, but anyways. Nora, I love you, Nora, too. So say Nora does something bad. She would never do something bad. But I can hit the three dots and I can hide her response. And what that does is when I go to show responses, those will not appear. So this is a dashboard that is private to me at this point. So I don't have to show share this screen with my student. So again, I can go through and I can hide or show responses um, that are appropriate. Maybe there's a strategy that I really want to highlight. So Darlene had a great strategy of coffee, obviously. I'm going to star that answer. I can star multiple answers. And what that's going to do is it's going to filter out only those ones that are starred. Because maybe I want to reference them. Maybe I want to use it to propel my lesson for the next day. So that's what I'm going to choose as the start. Or I'm going to hide. The other button here is that I can actually now leave feedback. So for Nora, I can actually type in great labeling of your animal. And I can send feedback. I can add more feedback as I go. Now, when Nora is in the slide deck and I'm presenting that slide, she's going to see a red icon at the bottom. Right now, we're not on the slide, so she won't see it. But a student would see a red icon in the bottom that says, you have some feedback. She'd be able to go in and see the feedback, and she'd be able to go back and change her drawing. So this is a relatively new feature. Um, it's great. So you can play around with the feedback feature. The three dots, as I told you, was to hide responses. This is a draggable slide. So these are my notes, which I don't need right now. This is a draggable slide. So I can see individual student responses to this question as it loads. But maybe in the moment, all I want to do is I want to show all of the answers on top of one another. So I'm going to go to the overlaid option. So this means I have all student responses on one sheet. So this is a really quick way for me as the teacher to get feedback. Say I have a number line and I thought most of my students understood the lesson so they all should be around this area. Turns out I have three students way over here. That's data for me to inform my practice. That's my guided group. So you can use that overlaid layout for questions that are the draggable ones, right? Those are really helpful to see the answers in that one. Question number three. These are the text ones. Obviously, a bunch of text. Here's a drawing slide again. Again, huge, easy feedback using a drawing slide. I can grab my guided group just by taking a quick 30-second glance through the answers. Multiple choice. Again, I can see it right here. So the reason why, oh, actually, I'm not going to get to the lock screens just yet, but this would be the multiple choice. So again, I can hover over and I can see who answered what. You would not present this to the students, right? This is the teacher dashboard. But what you can do is pick and choose what you want to show. And then when you're ready, so I've picked and choose, uh, I think, the first one. So again, maybe I'll just pick, oh, hello, Bronwyn, Sandra. 
Joe. All right, perfect. So I picked a few. And then what I'm going to do is something called show responses. So if I minimize my teacher dashboard, this was my presentation. So it automatically showed the responses I wanted them to see. So when I started my Pear Deck with the green button, it opened a tab with my presentation and it opened up a teacher dashboard. It automatically opens two things. The teacher dashboard is for you, but it's difficult in the online environment. So that's why you have to make sure you present now or not. And then this is what they see. So these were the answers that I selected that I wanted them to see. So again, you have so many options, what you can do, it's unbelievable. Down here at the bottom left-hand corner is where you can progress forward using the slides. I can see that everyone who joined my Pear Deck answered my question. It shows me I'm presenting it. I'm gonna hide the responses now. I don't want my students to see it on that page. Maybe I wanna unlock the screens again. I can do that. Here is where I got the timer. It's a little trick because it's a little triangle in the corner, but if you hold it down, you have a 30 second, one minute or three minute timer that you can set up for your students. Or you can just lock or unlock. Say you have a question like that number line one and you were like, whoa, they did not get that concept. Maybe I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna reteach, and then I'm gonna ask them the question again. So I can live, add in a brand new slide. If I hit the arrow twice, it actually takes me to some of my slides. So I, I can actually put in the same slide again and have my students answer it after I've retaught the concept. So you can use that to your advantage. You can insert a slide in the moment. The three dots, who there's some good options in here. You can make it a full screen. Projector is the view that the students would see if you're presenting a tab. You would hit uh, presenter. So when I said I showed the responses, that was in the projector mode. Here's where you can turn on student paste. So at the end of this, I can click that. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me a link. I can take that link and I can put it in the workspace. I can email it to my students. That means they can go in the slide deck and go to any slide that they want because I've turned on student paste mode. This is brand new, siren, siren, siren emoji. This is brand new. You can invite a co-teacher, meaning that you invite them they can then get into this teacher dashboard. They could be providing feedback in real time while you're progressing the slide. So use that co-teacher to your advantage. All it is, is if you invite the co-teacher, it's a link. Um, you send that link to them, they have to accept, um, and then they're in. So that's brand new, but it's great for those ECE dynamics um, with your EA, with someone you're co-teaching with. Maybe there's a principal coming in who wants to be engaged. Um, and play around with this tool, they can come in as the co-teacher to your Pear Deck and uh, have the same options. I do believe that you as the host are the only one who can move the students forward or back, but I haven't honestly played with it uh, as a co-teacher. So feel free to do that and give me some feedback on how that tool is. And then I can obviously end the ses session, which is great. In the top right-hand corner, before I hit end, if you ever need the code again, so maybe a student comes late, um, you can always open that code again. But in our case, we actually use the link. So because it's already in the chat box, if a student comes late to the lesson, just copy and paste that link for the next student. So the class roster, um, I can go in and see everyone who's joined. I can remove, I can block a student from the session if they are not engaging the way we need them to. You can block them from the session. Um, teachers, this is where your co-teachers would uh, be on here. If you need to remove a co-teacher, you can do that. So that's your classroom roster in the top right-hand corner. Again, if you do the climate survey, really great way to see how everybody's feeling. Some great data to inform what you do with your lesson. So now I've kind of gone over the teacher dashboard. I'm gonna end my session. I'm going to name it. So maybe this is live. January um, session. 
when I talk about student takeaways, when I click this and I end my session, within a couple of minutes, you're each going to get an email. Woohoo, more emails. And in that email is going to be a Google Doc with the slides and your answers. So you can actually see what you responded and you're gonna get the takeaway. Super, super exciting, I know. So I can share this link with my students, but I'm not going to um, because it automatically goes to their email and it goes into their drive under the Pear Deck folder. So now I'm going to return home. So that was in a nutshell, how I presented a Pear Deck. So remember I said, it's not the easiest of tools, meaning that there's a lot happening and I get it. So it takes practice. I'm not gonna lie, I practiced seven times by myself before I presented to all of you to try and get a little bit more comfortable. So once you have your slide deck ready, what I did was I went to Instructor Paste, I started the session, I closed, this window. I oh, oh, there it is. This is the link that I copied and I pasted it into the chat. And that's how I engaged with it in the Google Meet. So I'm going to close this and just end the session again. Sure. And return to Google Slides. If I choose student paste activity, it just takes me right here and gives me the link. So I can just copy that link and put it where I need it. It stays live until I end the session. So keep that in mind, um, it stays live. So you choose what option you want, um, student paste or instructor paste mode. So remember how I said that there are student takeaways that you can get at the end? Well, once you download the Google extension Pear Deck, it will automatically create a folder in your drive called Pear Deck. So when I'm done with a session, it's actually going to, one, it puts my slide deck in here as well, but it also creates a takeaway folder. In the takeaway folder gives me all of the slide decks that I've run a session with. So it names it by my Google slide deck. So this was my test I did in the spring. Here's the session that I just wanna take a look at. As you can see, I now have a copy of all of my student takeaways on Google Doc. So not only can I give feedback to my students right within Pear Deck using the comment bubble, but if I don't have time with that in the moment, I now have access to Steph's Google Doc from her session. And this is what it looks like. So here is the question, and here was her response. Obviously, she was on the sourdough trend. Uh, no surprise there. Um, if you know Steph, uh, please ask her for some sourdough. It's amazing. And sometimes she just delivers you a loaf, and the next day it's gone, and you don't know what happened to it. So use this place to take notes. So great job. Can't wait for another. You as the teacher can actually provide feedback. It's a shared document. Uh, you can use the comment feature in Google Docs. You can use Screencastify to give some more in-depth feedback, right? So the students can't really change their answer on here, but it's a great supplementary study tool uh, for the students to have and to use. And you can go back and forth with the students and maybe you can put some resources in here that you want them to use to maybe answer the question and go back uh, and answer a little bit differently. So in uh, when you publish those takeaways, I can't find it here because you know it's too much right now, but you do get a blank one. So you get a blank Google Doc and then you get all of your student answers in here. So, I know that that's a lot of information. I have talked a lot. Um, but what I want to say is that this tool is a lot of bang for your buck. If you're ready to take a step to learn a new tool, this is a really, really good one, right? Because it really does engage students. You can see that accessibility and how easy a drawing slide can be 
and yet how powerful it is for you to see the engagement and the learning taking place. It's very hard, especially when all the cameras are off. Um, it's very hard to see that engagement. But I, sitting here by myself, was able to see in real time that people were with me. So it kind of gave me a boost as an educator um, on the other side of it, which I think is really important. So it really does provide all that accessibility for our students with special needs, as well as our ESL population. So it really does provide um, that accessibility um, and that they can engage with the slides. Keeping in mind, you don't have to make it complicated. If you're looking for a place to start, oh, I think I already gave this, um, this is what that red bubble looks like for feedback, just FYI. This is what it looks like to the students, but you can take a look in the slide deck. Don't design for what the teacher says, design for what the student does. So if the student is gonna be drawing, you're gonna design your question around that, right? The student's gonna be engaging this way. So let me think of a question that's gonna use that, right? Try and as many of those different types of interactions as you can, right? Maybe not just drawing. Maybe you're gonna use um, the multiple choice. Maybe you're gonna use the draggable. Lots of, uh, lots of options there. If you want me to stop talking and you're very overwhelmed and it was a lot of information coming at you at the speed of light, just try starting with one Google slide and make it a drawing slide. Because you can have the text there, it kind of gives you more bang for your buck. So if you're looking for a place to start, do one blank Google slide with a writing prompt, share it with your students and get them to have fun with it. And then you're immediately gonna get that feedback and that joy from seeing their drawings and it's gonna want to encourage you to try more. Open your Pear Deck add-on, select draw slide, see the responses come in and get excited. When it works, and like I said, and we know that it will, start building engaging slide decks with different types of interactive questions. In the slide deck that I gave you, there are tons of resources, including a brand new YouTube playlist of tutorials for students. So you can play these videos before the students go in and start engaging with the slide deck, right? So you can show these videos as part of your lesson, and then they can get right into the Pear Deck. Weekly Wonder Packs, again on the Pear Deck website. Fantastic, fantastic packs of wonder questions that usually fit with wonderful themes happening that month um, that are great, that you can just copy and paste and use with your students. These images, Pear Deck has fantastic branding. First of all, the pears are just so cute. They have a YouTube channel, they have a resource bank, help videos, their Twitter account is, as the kids would say, fire. Um, and there's a document on how to get started with Pear Deck. This session is being recorded, so if you really want to hear my voice again, it's going to be put on the YouTube channel. Um, and maybe there's just a part of the session that you want to listen to again. And before I get into the questions, I had one more thing I wanted to show you. Um, back in the Pear Deck homepage, so this is where I got to this through the staff portal. So here I went into my settings, but remember how I said all of your sessions are saved on this page. So you can get into any session if it's live, because I believe these were student paste. I can go to the three dots, I can end the session, or I can turn on student paste mode from here. I can archive sessions. So it says after 30 days, these get put into the archive just to keep it nice and clean and organized. If you get turned around and you're like, I lost all of my tabs, I don't know what's going on, go to the staff portal, click Pear Deck, and you can always get to your teacher dashboard by clicking the teacher dashboard. So not to worry, you can get to it from this homepage if you can't remember where you are, who you are, and what's going on. Um, Obviously, any further questions, feel free to reach out to your LT consultant. Um, we are happy to help you with it.